Theater from Las Vegas, Jay welcomes Heather Locklear and the acrobatics of Cirque du Soleil. You can bet on it. Stay up for Jay. The world is now watching America's most watched news magazine, Dateline. NBC News, now more than ever. Hello, everyone. I'm Melissa Beck. And I'm Todd McDermott. Our lead story tonight, the verdict in the O.J. Simpson civil trial. A jury has determined he is liable for the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. The decision unanimous among the jurors, and the jury is ordering $8.5 million compensatory damages to the families of the victims. No statement from Simpson as he left the courthouse, obviously disappointed. And now the question is, where will the money he's been ordered to pay come from? Simpson says his considerable financial wealth has been depleted by the costs of defending himself in his two trials. And as we continue to follow the story as it happens, we understand right now the Goldman attorneys are making a statement. Let's go to our affiliate KNBC in Los Angeles. Charlie, I understand you have a statement you want to make first. We want to make clear to everyone that... Um, we are very grateful for this jury's verdict, and we feel that there has been vindication for Ron's death and Nicole's death. However, this trial is still in progress. It is not concluded. The court's confidentiality order is still in effect. Proceedings will be resuming on Thursday, so we will not be able to get into uh, the merits of the case or discuss anything in regard to the case, but I would like to have Mr. Goldman say just a few words to you. Okay. I'll just step this way, sir. This is, uh, by the way, Fred Goldman, who, of course, is the father of Ronald Goldman. Today's two and a half years, a little over two and a half years, and we finally have justice for Ron and Nicole. <coughs> and we have it because of Dan, Petricelli, Ed Medvin, Tom Lambert, Peter Gelblum, Yvette, Yvette Molinero, <coughs> Steve Foster, Oh, my mind's going crazy. I'm sorry. The, the names just aren't coming quick enough. And it was done with honesty and dignity, complete truth. And our family is grateful for a verdict of responsibility, which is all we ever wanted. And we have it. Thank God. <laughs> Mr. Goldman, can I ask you, at the moment you heard this, this verdict sitting there in this court, I mean, you've sat through now two verdicts, of course, the one in the criminal trial and now this one. What went through your mind as you heard that uh, verdict read? Oh, I think just what I said. Thank God for some justice for Ron and Nicole. We've waited two years, seven months, and some number of days, and if I could add quick enough, I'd figure it out. But we're enormously grateful and thankful, and I can't tell you how grateful and how thankful. And, and like I said, if it weren't for, for all these wonderful attorneys who, whose passion, whose belief, whose willingness to put in 24 hours a day for all this time is proof of the kind of people they are. And I think that's part of the reason why we're, we're, we're at today. Again, that is Ronald Goldman, father of Fred Goldman, father of Ronald Goldman, expressing relief and feeling that justice has been done that O.J. Simpson now will be held responsible for the murders. That uh, a live broadcast by our NBC affiliate in Los Angeles. Obviously, Mr. Goldman, very emotional. It has been a long road for them, but it may not be over. No doubt, appeals will follow as well as legal haggling over where the money will come from, and we'll of course continue to follow this story. The other big news tonight, one that will impact many of our lives, the President's State of the Union Address. The focus of the President's speech, what he calls a call to action for American education as proposals could affect your family's bottom line. The President wants to establish national education standards and have them in place by 1999. Let's work together to meet these three goals. Every eight-year-old must be able to read. Every 12-year-old must be able to log onto the internet. 
Every 18-year-old must be able to go to college, and every adult American must be able to keep on learning for a lifetime. The president also wants to boost education spending by 20% in 1998, 40% by 2002. He wants a $1,500 tax credit for the first two years of college or a $10,000 tax deduction so families can pay for college or job training. Raising standards will not be easy, and some of our children will not be able to meet them at first. The point is not to put our children down, but to lift them up. Good tests will show us who needs help, what changes in teaching to make, and which schools need to improve. Other highlights from the president's speech on the subject of a balanced budget amendment, he called it, quote, unnecessary and unwise, although he did reiterate a push to balance the budget by the early part of the next century. He set July 4th as the deadline to come up with a plan for campaign finance reform and one of the few foreign policy notes he called for an eastward expansion of NATO as well as maintaining a strong dialogue with China. And by the way, if you were looking for native Kansan, U.S. Agriculture Secretary Dan Glickman in the audience, he wasn't there. He was the cabinet member selected to not attend tonight's speech in case of a catastrophe. Glickman is eighth in the White House line of succession. All right, the Republican response to the president's speech emphasizes traditional GOP themes of returning power to local governments. A little while ago, we had the chance to talk with several members of the Kansas congressional delegation. In the details, uh, in taking notes, we have more for education, more for welfare, more for the arts, more for police, more for defense. I don't know how you do that and still achieve a balanced budget. I'm concerned about what I hear in the speech of an additional somewhere between 50 and 100 billion dollars of more spending uh, and preserving and protecting Medicare at the same time uh, that we're going to balance the budget by 2002. And I want to see how does he propose that we actually get there. Well, I don't know. Many of the themes that the president sounded tonight are traditionally Republican themes, and so it's hard to tell. There were a couple of, I agree with you, a couple of swipes uh, that seemed to be uh, more partisan than what I had anticipated. Uh, and we'll have to see how this, uh, these issues play out. I think there's a general agreement among Congress, uh, certainly the Republicans, that we're interested in finding the common ground where, uh, where we can agree with the president. I think this is a Congress that needs to have some accomplishments, not just rhetoric. Representative Jerry Moran and a couple of other notes about the president's speech. He said he wants a ban on cigarette advertising, also legislation to make it easier for women everywhere to get and pay for mammograms and to keep working to get another 100,000 police officers on the streets. Now we head straight into the homes of Kansans everywhere and the world of the stay-at-home mom. Right, a completely different world than what we've been looking at in Congress. It can be a difficult world fraught with diapers, uh, to change mouths to feed little ones, to entertain, and it is a juggling act and it can make you crazy. There are many ways to maintain your sanity though, and they're called friends. KSN's Jill Newton found a support group designed for women who leave the career check. For the mommy track and those involved, call it their saving grace. No one ever said raising children was easy, but Deanna Ercolani, a social worker when she was BK, that's before kids, never expected it to be such a challenge. Oh, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. I thought that I'd have a lot more free time. I wouldn't be at my stressful job. I would have more time to maybe do hobbies and read. You gotta finish crawling. Instead, Deanna is feeding, coaching, and running around with her two-year-old cut-up Nick sometimes 24 hours a day. <laughs> Deanna has a supporting husband, but she also has this, a support group of women who also traded their other life for the mother life. <laughs> Mom's night out. The transition between your other life and the mother life can be tough. Many women feel isolated, like they've lost their identity, even lost respect. The women here say this group helps dispel those feelings and, more importantly, keeps them sane. Rule number one, if mama ain't happy, nobody is happy. Rule number two, refer to rule number one. The group is called female. That's formerly employed mothers at the leading edge. Meetings twice a month are support group meetings. They also plan activities. Core members are talking through the yearly calendar. We haven't done anything on the relationship issues, husband-wife thing. Oh, we get a lot, oh. Right, we get a lot of things done, but we also do a lot of socializing, a lot of kidding around. You know, things that you used to have in the office when you were there. And 
so it's wonderful. We get to speak in more than two syllables. We get to have adult conversations and um, talk with people who understand the kinds of things that we're going through. After talking to a two-year-old or being cooped up because they're sick or it's cold out, um, it gets very old. <laughs> it gets very frustrating. Okay, vacation spot. Here, they completely understand that. These are the little things they don't want to miss. Maybe only a mother could love them, but these women say they wouldn't trade the time for the world. On special assignment, Jill Newton, KSN News 3. And again, if you have made the transition from a mom who works outside the home to one who works inside the home, keep these suggestions in mind. Make time for adult friends. It will allow you to talk about other things that interest you. Plan quality, quiet time. We all need to spend a little time by ourselves to clear out our head or just rest. And look for activities that you and your little one can enjoy outside the home. Just as you can feel you're chained to your job, you can easily become frustrated if you feel you're chained to your house. And of course, you can join a group like Female. If you'd like to join the Wichita chapter or if you're interested in starting one up in your area, call Christy Halsman at 729-0009. If you can't get that number now, don't worry. We will repeat it at the end of the newscast. By the way, this group also allows daddies to join too, stay-at-home daddies. So All it's right. not just for females. And besides that phone number, still ahead on the night, be Clark Schaefer has highlights of tonight's KU Hoops game at Missouri in overtime. Ooh. Dave Freeman has a look at Wednesday's weather as well. And go get some coloring paper. We'll have a look at the news crayon colors from Crayola. The first in years. It's when the KSN News 3 Night Beat continues. Yeah. You're watching KSN News 3 Night Beat with Melissa Beck, Todd McDermott, Dave Freeman's weather, and Clark Schaefer on sports. Closed captioning is brought to you by Park West Plaza, Retirement and Assisted Living Center. Whether you enjoy the energy of a larger city or the slower pace of small town life, Kansas is a great place to live. And Southwestern Bell's reliable service bridges those miles between us, while advancing technology promises to bring us even closer in the future. That's the kind of commitment and quality every Kansan deserves. And when allowed, that's what Southwestern Bell will bring to long-distance services, keeping us connected no matter where we live. We want Caesar chicken! Caesar chicken! Who you calling chicken? New Caesar. It's Spangle's new Caesar chicken on pita. The fluffiest, fresh, stuffed pita bread in the empire. Sweet red onions, red juicy tomatoes, tender grilled chicken topped with creamy Caesar dressing and crisp lettuce. Caesar chicken on pita. The newest in fresh stuffed pitas from Spangle's. Made fresh, made to order. Spangle's new Caesar chicken rules. Wake up to one of Spangle's breakfast pitas. It's the two center in February. Bass Singer Police is fly, which is a cellular amazing low price leader. Blake Bass Singer here, and there's never been a better time to pick up a cell phone. Right now, you can get two cent minutes and a tiny little audio box portable. Free phone, two cent minutes, free activation, and over $120 in accessories for free. It's the toughest deal we've ever done. Just ask for the two center. Bass Singer Central and Emporia get the same great deals at a mobile unit. Bass Singer is an authorized cellular one dealer. Taxes and interconnect apply. New fixed term activation with cellular one required. There's only one telephone directory with a community section that's a complete guide for where to go and what to do. A calendar of events, museums, recycling centers, shopping districts, volunteer organizations, and more. The Community Connection, only in the Feist. Isn't that nice? There's only one telephone directory that has more than 500 money-saving full-color coupons. This phone book has 210 pages of offers you can't refuse. Two-for-one deals, cash savings, and great discounts. Hundreds of handy full-color coupons, only in the Feist. Isn't that nice? The 1846 on the porch light may not mean much to you until you know it could save lives. It's called an addresso light, and it's part of a new community policing program. The light will make it easier for police or EMS workers to find a home. The first a 